Hey everybody, it's Suzanne, and today we're going to do a posthumous portrait of a sweet lion named Luke. Now Luke the lion here was the uh, male lion at the Smithsonian's National Zoo, and he passed away this past October, I believe it was. And um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do his portrait. And so that's what you're going to see. This is the completed portrait, and I'm going to take you step by step. Now, you're going to see my process, but you're going to see it in a time-lapse version, because otherwise this would be a really, really long video. So again, thanks for joining me. And if you're my subscribers, as always, thank you so much. And if you're not, please consider subscribing. And if you want a painting mentor, somebody to coach you along with your painting journey, consider my membership on my YouTube channel and also my Patreon channel. So let's go ahead and jump into the posthumous portrait of Luke the Lion. I started out the portrait of Luke just using a transparent red oxide and basically just did a very rough sketch. Now, I realize I actually did not do a video of all the colors that I used in Luke's portrait. So I'll give you a quick rundown of basically the, the palette that I used when I start laying in the paint. Of course, I had titanium white, had yellow ochre, raw umber, ivory black. I also had Raw Sienna by Michael Harding. I had, ooh, what was that? Italian Brown Ochre by um, Michael Harding. And uh, I put a little bit of, um, let's see, you'll see when I put the, do the main, I'm using a lot of um, Purple Lake and uh, and a little bit of Van Dyke Brown. So that's basically the colors. And when I get to the eyes, I needed them to be a really pale greeny gold. And so I really just used the ultramarine blue and a little bit of yellow ochre and made sort of a, a gray color. I added a little bit of ivory black and titanium white to that and you'll see, it, it'll all come together. So it wasn't an extensive palette that I used. You'll see that the background, I keep the background very similar to the actual lion's color. I didn't want to have a bunch of contrasting colors. So this was a very limited palette indeed. Here's where you see a lot of the purple lake, and it, it, I love this color. It's a very dark color, but it, it just livens things up. Um, one of the things, too, that I'm doing, even though this was a very loose sketch, I can see where I end up having to make corrections. And whether you see me do it or not um, in this video, I'm often checking my angles. So, of course, the eyes, the nostrils, etc., all need to fall within the same plane. So I will occasionally go back and check my angles.
eyes are always the funnest part. Now, um, yeah, you can see I have my mall stick just so I have something to steady my hand. So that gray green color that I told you about earlier is basically mixed with just using ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, and a little bit of gray. In this case, I just made a black and white gray and mixed that in to make that eye color. And you'll see that I end up reworking these eyes again. Um, I had it a little low. Again, you remember I have to keep checking my angles? I didn't check enough. And sometimes when you make an error, you just gotta go back and do it over again. So, <laughs> yeah, and I'm using a little pointed round. It's one of the uh, Workbench Warrior Series brushes by Rosemary. Awesome little brushes, love them, love them, love them. And they just get in and get all the point, you know, they get, they're tiny enough to where they can get in all the tight places. Just love these little brushes.
I just love all of Luke's little freckles that he has on his nose leather. And so I'm, you know, wanting to make sure that I get that correct. It's it's almost like Dalmatian spots, you know. You've got to make sure every freckle's in the right place, every spot's in the right place, right? So you'll see that I'm actually going to use that brush here in a little bit, and I'm checking angles constantly. Um, and I realize, ooh, I'm a little off on the eyes. So here I am checking the angles, and I'm like, eh. I'll probably go back up and finish it. And oftentimes, mistakes that I make within a painting aren't even seen until the next day. And another trick, folks, if you're working on a piece, take photographs of your work often and look at the photographs of your paintings against your reference. And that's another great way to see mm, where you might be off a little bit. It's, uh, I do it. <laughs> it's funny. I often don't see the mistake until actually actually till after I'm looking at some of the video that I shoot um, so yeah it's I, I, I'm constantly making corrections of have the face blocked in I'm going ahead and putting the darker aspects of this guy's mane in um, he's, he had a beautiful beautiful dark mane and I'm just kind of still I'm, I'm still feeling my way through 
uh, I didn't do a sketch other than the the painted sketch that you saw earlier. So this is this is me kind of just having fun. I have to say, I like being able to fly by the seat of my pants on a painting. Sometimes it 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 allows me to have that um, I don't know the freedom I guess to find my way through the piece. So I can already tell that you can see that eye on the left is a little wonky. And know, knowing that I have to fix it, I've already started making my lines different. <coughs> so most of that eye is going to, well, it's going to disappear, is what's going to happen. And funny thing is, here's a little uh, foreshadowing. You see how on the upper left-hand corner of my canvas, where I just did a wash to kind of get a background in, I like the weird texture that I was creating here. And I end up making that using paint thinner to really come up with a really interesting background that I had not ever used before. It was just kind of by accident. And I end up going back and, and doing that. So, yeah. So a lot of the darker values, you'll see me going back and forth, back and forth. I have it too light, then I have it too dark. I've got, I'd rather have it dark and then work my way up. But when I'm blocking a piece in, sometimes I just kind of squint and just go with what I see as my basic value or uh, intensity of color. And then I go back and fix what needs to be fixed, whether it's a temperature swap or a value swap, I, I, I'll go ahead and fix it. But um, I'm just trying to, I'm still in the very early blocking in stage of this painting. Okay, so as I'm moving through here, you can see here's the corrected eye. Um, I've already fixed that eye, and you can kind of see a little bit more of the color that's in there. And I'm just kind of brushing through. So you can see now that I've kind of have the shape of the cat in, um, I'm going back in, correcting my values, correcting my colors. And I'm using a lot of that. You can see that purpley cast um, in some of the darker values because I love, again, playing with complementary colors. If I'm using so much yellow ochre, it's nice to have a nice purple, right? So I'm using the purple lake quite a bit. And I'm intensi intensifying my dark values so I have something to jump off of when I put the light values on. And it will make more sense when you start to see me working the rough of the mane. And uh, you can see my reference below. Um, that was uh, Luke the lion and the reference came from the Smithsonian's National Zoo. Now I'm, I'm looking at that muzzle and I end up 
making it a, a bringing it out a little bit. So sometimes when I'm working, I can see that mm, this is a little smaller. This is a little, you know, not quite right on this side. So I'm constant. My brain is constantly flipping around, and I'm looking at where the angles are. It's like, okay, this is coming out a little bit more. Let's see. Now I'm using here. This is a, a 278 series um, filbert, and it's it's nice because it's got enough spring to it, but it's still softer. Now, folks, I am working on a stretched canvas this time, so I know you're used to seeing me paint a lot on masonite, which is super slick. This isn't so slick, so I need a I need brushes that are a little bit coarser and have a little bit more bounce to them.
you will. This is a classic um, example of painting um, fat on lean. So I have a very thin amount of paint on the actual chin. Uh, I am using some titanium white mixed in to give it that, you know, there's that gray color, but I'm using it very sparingly. And so I'm using, a, see how I'm keeping the values pretty dark um, underneath the chin. But it's not until I actually start l adding the light hair on top do I thicken up, you know, become not quite impasto, but it's a lot heavier, a lot thicker. So I'm keeping that paint very thin on the chin. And I'm really looking over some of the other structures here and uh, getting in the light value. So I'm and sometimes I'm working a little slower here, but it's happening. It's happening. to ignore that hideous hair do that I've got going on but uh, anyhow I'm painting the sides here and it's it's here where I start to experiment a little bit with the paint thinner it kind of happens by accident but when it does I'm like oh and I was like oh see that neat little texture there in the uh, upper left hand corner of my uh, my canvas and I'm thinking I actually I have my student is in there with me and I'm like are you seeing this this is just too much fun I am like throwing paint thinner all over the place and having a ball. So, you know, just to show you a little close up here of the actual effects, this is the coolest thing. So I'm just actually putting a little paint thinner on my fingertips and flicking it. You know, just going flick, flick. And it makes these neat. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. I was having a ball with this. And now that I've done it once, you know, like I said, you're going to be seeing this again. This was too much fun. And I really think it uh, offered a lot to the actual, I don't know, it just it just felt right. It almost looks like um, like metal, like copper. When you, if you did try to like play with a patina on copper or something, that's what it made me think of. And I really, really liked it. All right, so I got to block in these ears. And some of the, the ear on the right is actually almost hidden by the main. But this left ear, or actually his right ear, but the one on the left side, um, is pretty prominent so I've got to get that ear in and I'm working around and I I will have to have enough paint on the background even though the paints quite thin where I'm flicking all this paint thinner on here um, I will have to have it a little bit thicker to create that soft edge because you know how I like my soft edges especially with that mane going into it but I'm still kind of blocking in the mane so you'll see we'll actually add some more paint to the background so I have a soft edge for the main to go into, etc. It'll all it'll all come together.
am bringing that um, rough of the mane out a little bit more and still working it, working it here. Um, I, I, again, want to make sure that I don't go too light too soon with the values on the, on the rough part of the mane. And uh, so I'm, I'm just kind of going in a little darker so I can have something, again, to bounce off of so my light values will show out. Now, folks, don't forget, if you have any questions about anything that I'm covering here today, because I know I'm really just flying through this, and uh, yeah, just leave it in the comment section and let me know uh, what your questions might be. This isn't actually a long video. It took me a while to do this painting, because I did a couple other pieces that I had to do in between this one, but I couldn't wait to get back to this one, because this was a really fun painting. And... Uh, so I'm, I'm working those dark values. You know me and my dark values. I gotta get them in. So I'm, I'm popping those in where I can, and, and just kind of. And you can see some of the uh, special effects that I did with the paint thinner on the background has been covered up, but I keep adding more. So now that I have sort of the darker values down, I can start adding the lighter ones on top, and that's why you've got to have the dark areas to bounce off of. So I'm working that muzzle, and I'm working. I keep going over some of the same areas because I keep bringing it out a little bit more. And, uh, you know, then I'm getting a lot of those little light hair areas in the rough part of the mane. <coughs> and if I have the detail in, if I need to, I can glaze over it if I have to do any color correction. By glazing, I mean using transparent layers on top. But well, I don't guess I ever really did any glazing on this one. You can see I'm adding some of the light values here, but then I go back over it with some more dark values. I go back and forth all over this painting. Quite frankly, folks, um, I was just having too much fun. And when I get into an area where I can really have a ball, I just lose myself. I lose myself in the painting. Now, this brush that I'm using, I'm using a sword. And cheers, folks. I'm having a little mescal while I'm <laughs> painting a... Mr. Luke here, and, and it was quite a nice day. <laughs> again, back to the nose, talking about the freckles in the nose again. Even though earlier you saw that there was some freckles, it wasn't really the, um, I ended up making the nose a little bit broader and bigger, so I had to cover up the original freckles, but I'll be putting more freckles in, no big deal. Um, and uh, so getting that nose in, and you can see the reference there on the side. So you can see where I need to put those freckles.
back to that chin. So those the thin layer of paint that I put down with the darker values, now I can put the lighter um, valued thicker paint on top. And so now I'm layering up the chin and putting in all that neat fun hair. And, and again, using, this happens, the brush that I'm using here is a, hmm, I know it's a little dagger. I believe it is a, uh, um, one of the synthetic um, daggers. It's a, uh, oh goodness gracious, I want to say it's a gold something or other. But it's a rosemary brush and it's a wonderful little brush. Now I'm knowing that I can't really put a lot of the, hairs on the chin until I finish the neck that under under the chin hair first so I can put the you know the other broader hairs on top so knowing that the values are a little bit cooler I'm sorry the temperature is a little bit cooler and the value is a little bit darker underneath that area you know you want to create that form and you want to make depth in the piece and in a, in a way all this fur on this animal's body is almost like a landscape in itself because we have or the topography of it, it's that you've got so much depth in that fur and uh, just creating it here's a little here's a little view of the palette so you can see I have a lot of my um, darker colors are all grouped together the the um, ivory black the um, raw umber and the purple lake all right there in the middle I have a little bit of um, ultramarine blue up there on the right hand corner so I just keep moving around. Yes, <laughs> sorry. I just keep putting that palette everywhere. But I'm just going back into the rough here and I keep bringing it out a little bit more.
getting down to the wire, I'm starting to add a lot of the finer details. And you can see I keep darkening my values so that I can lighten them back up. You know, I need something to, like I said, bounce off of. Got the whisker tracks in, and I'll be putting whiskers in in just a bit. So it's 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 on the home stretch, folks. And I'm really digging Luke. He's looking good. Um, and uh, again, here I'm looking uh, using one of my smaller pointed rounds here. It's um, and it because I don't need to do the I individual hairs like the. Um, there we go. I'm back to the um, the little angled uh, dagger brush, but. This ear on that side is almost covered up by the uh, the mane and some of the rough around his, the side of his face. But what's fun here is when you're using that dagger, you've got to vary your stroke, let it wiggle a little bit. If you if you've actually seen a lion's mane, that hair is long and coarse, and it's not silky and fine. So you've got to give it that little bit of you know coarseness and, and to do that I just like let the brush wiggle a little bit if that makes sense kind of make it look kind of wiry and wiggly <laughs> it's hard to explain and hopefully you can see this in the uh, the video <laughs> Now, here's a little close up of some of the brushwork. So, I'm taking, you see how it kind of, you got to vary it a little bit. So, you just, you know, you don't want to be completely straight. And, you know, so just kind of wiggling it a little bit. Sometimes you'll see me just kind of raw, <laughs> give it a little shake. And uh, so, you can see that hair, it's starting to, to take form there. And I'm, and I'm really having a ball. And he's, I'm basically very happy with it so far. I'm so much, I'm almost done almost done and there's another closer look at this weird funky background that I'm working with and I'm I still got to lay that mane in but I want it to all be a part of the same piece so it's important that there be enough paint on the background so that I can um, give that soft edge to the mane <laughs> I basically have my background in I've gotten the dark values of the main put in and now I've got to put the highlights uh, in the main so I'm using the purple lake with a little titanium white and a little bit of raw umber just to knock it down a little bit and uh, just using that little dagger brush to get some of the uh, fun texture in the main again doing the little wiggle <laughs> 
keeping it wiry and wiggly and just getting it done i am right now at the home stretch and about ready to finish up now i still have to do some whiskers and i will use the um the little dagger brush <coughs> excuse me to get those whiskers in and uh, i gotta put a little life into the eyes so stay with me we're getting there towards the end <laughs> Getting close to the end here, folks. Uh, consider becoming one of my members on my YouTube channel. I'd love to have you. Um, if you join the upper tier, I'll get to do critiques of your work and help you along on your journey as an artist. I can uh, make recommendations and we'll have a little bit of a more one-on-one uh, -on -one time. Now, you hear Mr. Singer was coming over to, to give me some love. So he's standing on me. You can't tell, but he's standing up on me. And here's a close-up of the eyes. I've just got to add a little life into these eyes. And I'm using a very pale blue just to give it that, that little spark that you need in the eyes. And folks, we're about ready to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. I'd love to hear from you with any comments that you may have. Leave it downstairs in the comment section. Okay, I think Luke the lion is finished. I may look at him a little bit tomorrow. I've not signed him yet. Um, but I think he's done. I, I really enjoyed this piece. I'll bring it in close here. So I really had a ball. You're gonna laugh, but what I had a lot of fun was with the background. And a lot of that was just me flicking paint thinner onto washes of color. And it, and it did that really funky little textured effect there. Um, you know, we, I used the, uh, the sword brush or the dagger a lot for some of the fur. I did the whiskers that way a little light in the eyes we see you know he's got a little life in his eyes and um, yeah you can see a lot of that textures up here too if I can get past the glare so you know we've got a really bad glare it's the afternoon here in the studio and there's all kinds of glare coming in my window so but you can see that really interesting effect and I wanted to keep where the mane goes into the background very soft so he becomes part of his background so you can see the definition there's not a lot of definition between where his mane starts and stops and the background starts and stops. So this, folks, was a really fun piece. And if you like today's video, you know what to do. Go ahead and leave any questions you have in the comment section and give me a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. This today is, I'm going to call this one a wrap. Luke the Lion. Yeah, that was a long video, right? And that was expedited. This is obviously the, um, this is Luke. And I enjoyed this painting so much. And what's funny is one of the parts I enjoyed almost as much as any other part was the background. Now, I know there's a lot of glare over here and I, and I brought you in close on a lot of the, um, the process on how I did the background. You know, using paint thinner and splashing it around, it was somewhat serendipitous. It kind of happened, kind of glad it did. And now you'll probably be seeing a lot more of that and a lot more of my backgrounds to come. So yeah, this was, this was truly a fun, fun piece. Um, and I've done work or I've painted at the Smithsonian Zoo before. They've got, they've had several of my pieces in the past and I really wanted to do this one for them too. So I am hoping that they will enjoy it, uh, but it might get, I may try to show it a little bit before it actually makes its trip to the zoo. So thanks for joining me. And if you have any questions about anything I covered in today's video, you know what to do. Leave it in the comment section and I'll get to it. And yeah, give me a thumbs up if you like today's video and uh, consider joining my membership and subscribing to my video if you aren't already a subscriber to my channel, excuse me. But check out my membership platform that I can help you along with your painting journey and 
hey, I can help critique your work. We'll become pals. We'll do some one-on-ones. Go ahead, take a look at my YouTube membership. All right, so from Kingsport, Tennessee, I want to say thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, I'll see you.